Hi, Jackie. I'm Karen Potts. Um, so great to see you. So I know you're an author and a speaker, and you've been um, a life coach, right? Can you tell me a little bit about what you do? Yeah, so I, I, everybody, this is Jackie Woodside. Yeah, thank you, Karen. It's great to be here with you and, and with your audience. So yeah, I've done all kinds of coaching, executive coaching, performance coaching, life coaching. <clears throat> I was a therapist for 30 years. And, you know, after 30 years of being with people's healing and recovery and listening to their pain and the difficulty, I really wanted to shift and and be a coach, you know, work with people around their empowerment and their sense of direction in life. So I actually started coaching 27 years ago before people could be certified to be a coach. I was trained by a company that I really enjoyed many, many years ago. But um, I closed my therapy portion of my business 10 years ago and started doing uh, empowerment work, leading empowerment workshops and trainings. I've written three books, as you know, we're going to talk about my Money Vibe book. And uh, I love what I do every single day when I get up and I just feel very uh, excited, really excited about my work. I love my clients. I love my students who take my programs and uh, I love thinking about this stuff. It's really it's a blessing. So yeah, uh, I do coaching and training and speaking and authoring. I guess those are the, the four areas that I work on. So tell me about this newest book that you have just birthed, Money Vibe. Yeah. How did the idea for this book come about? Yeah, it's a great question. And so I do, a, m the majority of my work is around empowering people to take charge of their life. So what I do, my books have all been about the, the what I call the hot spots that people have. So my first book was on people's relationship to change, unexpected change or trying to make change. My second book was on time, my calming the chaos book was on time, hot spot for people. What does everybody say? Oh, I don't have time. I don't have time. And everybody's so stressed and overwhelmed about time. So that was my second book. And then my third book uh, is on money, you know, money vibe. So how did I, how did I think of it? I really look to see what are the, what are the areas of pain or stress or difficulty that people have and, you know, change time and money seem to be the, the big areas where people have so what's some. What's the fourth people. one going to be? <laughs> yeah, one, I already have it figured out. The fourth one is going to be, uh, yeah, it's going to be relationship vibe relationship oh, that's gonna be a good one that fits perfectly in with all the other things right. you've got all that together you know right you know. so really yeah. what i look is to help people think about and empower themselves and around the major stress points in their lives and so you know this this last book the one i just released money vibe is about your relationship with money what you say about money how you feel about money how you're managing money a lot of people, when they're upset about money, they just, you know, close their eyes and they don't want to see it. They, they look the other way. It's too much. So they avoid it. Well, that's not a strategy toward the kind of financial life that you want. And then other people do the opposite. It's like, oh, I'm going to, you know, spend all my money and I just want to enjoy my life and carpe diem. Well, that's probably not a great strategy. Or you can go the other way, like, oh, I got to hold on to my money and I worry about my money. None of those are going to set you up to have a great empowered relationship with money. So this book is about finding a different path, a path of empowerment and prudence and clarity and freedom around money. What was the most surprising thing for you when you were studying this whole money vibe thing and writing the book? What's the most surprising thing that you either learned or discovered in the process of writing that book? Yeah, I think it was really, I think it was really um, eye-opening for me to see how much people really are struggling with money. So I looked at the stress in America surveys. Uh, and one of the things I found was that the number one thing that people have been stressed about as long as they've been doing the stress in America surveys is money. Uh, up until 2016, when there was a change in the political climate of the United States, that was the first year that you know, political concerns or fear for our future surpassed people's fear of money. Uh, but now in, 20, in 2017, it's come right back into the same, you know, people are mostly feared and concerned about money. And, you know, I've gone through periods of my life where I did not have any money. I have been homeless. I have lived with, like, literally, I had no money to the point where I had to buy groceries with my mobile credit card before you could use credit cards to buy groceries in a grocery store. I'm aging myself a little bit there, but there was a time you could not use a credit card in grocery stores. And, but I had a mobile mark card. 
and I could buy you know, a loaf of bread or some orange juice with my mobile mark card. So I've been very, I've had periods of my life of being very poor. And it really- the turning point for you? Yeah, I think the turning point was recognizing that I, I had the, it was within my power to make a difference for myself. So I think maybe being homeless, uh, living with no money, getting a better education, and then really the biggest turning point was when I became an empowerment coach. And I started really seeing that my experience of life is not outside of me. It's not how much money I have or don't have. It's all in what I believe, what, I, what my emotions are, how I feel, what my attitudes are about money, and what my thoughts are. In the Money Vibe book, I say that your beat, your B-E-A-T, beliefs, emotions, attitudes, and thoughts. When I realized that's the key, it changed everything. Hmm. That's an interesting one. Yeah, I really enjoyed reading your book. I think for me, there were a couple of turning points in there where it was like, mm, I hadn't thought of things before. You know, about our relationship with money. I didn't even realize I had a relationship with money. So right. for me, that was a surprising point to surprising conclusion for me reading the book was that mm, I do have a relationship and in some cases it's healthy and in other cases it's not. And so I decided to shift the focus on that and work on making a better relationship in the area where it wasn't so great. So I found your book fascinating in that aspect because not only does it touch on the concrete part of money and how you manage it day to day, it goes deeper into that relationship aspect. Yeah. And the vibe, the so-called vibe that I wasn't even paying attention to right. at the time. And the other thing that's surprising is that we grow up with beliefs about money that we acquire through our journey. Yeah. And in some cases, we're not even aware that we take on those beliefs. So that was a surprising thing for me to realize some of the areas that I was not aware of. So I really enjoyed reading your book for that aspect. Yeah, I do say that I, I tell people this is not a personal finance book. It, it's not a book about your, you know, how to manage the day to day, although it will have you think about that differently. It's a book to really help you understand how to have a good relationship with money no matter what. And, and like you said, realizing you have a relationship with money and then developing one that's more empowered. Mm -hmm. I decided to do something unusual because when I open my purse, I now bless my wallet. Oh, nice. I've never done that before, but we'll see what happens. Oh, well, that's bringing a very high vibe to your relationship with money. We'll see what happens then. Yeah, for sure. So one of the things that I do is um, I coach people on a topic of passion. Yes. And for some people, it's a fluffy topic or a foo -foo topic, but to me, it's a very real thing. And I'm sure as you agree, it's a high vibe. Yeah. And you, oh, get it, yeah. you are lined up with something that you are meant to do, born to do, or it's a calling. You've got that high vibe of, oh my gosh, there's energy involved in this. So let me ask you, when you think of the word passion, how do you define it? Yeah, that's a good question. I think to me, you know, passion is really, uh, it's aligned with thinking about having a purpose and having a mission. So passion for me is just kind of part of the overall context of how someone lives. Passion is, uh, it's what calls you forth, has you uh, stand up and stand for something. In a lot of ways, I think that's one of the things in our culture, in American culture, that's kind of died, is people don't live with passion anymore. People are just getting by. People are surviving. And that sense of passion, meaning a sense of purpose, greater purpose than the just day-to-day, -day, is something that, that we need to bring back, and which is why I love about your work, bring the whole notion of passion into our lives in a very real and tangible way, not just something you think about on vacation. Or not just something like, oh, I have to go on vacation so I can enjoy life. No, you have to have that passion every moment of every day in life. Mm -hmm. Like doing this kind of work right now to me is passion. Yeah, absolutely. I love doing it. It's not work to me. Right. Um, the work that I actually do for the nonprofit that I work for, it doesn't, I don't even call it work. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because I love doing it. Right. It's so, to other people, they often think that I'm playing. Right, right. Well, right. in a sense, we are. Whether you get paid or not. I love that. Yeah, it's, I you know, I would it. do this whether I get paid or not. I love, mm -hmm. you know, thinking about and talking about and teaching about these, these subjects of passion and purpose and vibe. I think it's so important. And I would do it whether I get paid or not. I do it standing in line at the grocery store. I talk about these things. <laughs> I, I talk about these things at the health club. You know, it doesn't matter where I am. This is what I think about and talk about. That's why sometimes people think that I'm weird. Because <laughs> I will ask them things like, you know, so what are you passionate about? Maybe five minutes after meeting them. And they're right. like, uh, right. whoa, I've never That's thought about it. Hazard. But the, ma the most amazing thing is that people are willing to talk about it because nobody's ever asked them before. And I, some of them have to think about it a little bit because they have not been trained to think or live in that way. So they, they've just gotten up on Monday morning, gone to work, lived for Friday, enjoyed the weekend, and then repeat, repeat, repeat. Right. So right. for so many people, in fact, I think the statistic is 13% of right. Americans are actually happy right. and enjoy what they do. And that's a very yeah. low number. Yeah, it's really, think about this. this percentage of heart attacks occur Monday mornings. Monday morning, that's so true, very true. And we need to change that. Yeah. Because life is way too short yeah. to not enjoy every minute of it. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. So for you, what's next for you? I mean, you've done quite a bit. You've spoken in many places. I believe you even have a TEDx. I do, yeah. that you've done. Um, <laughs> you've accomplished quite a bit. What's like next for you? I know you have the fourth book coming. Yeah, well, I have the book coming out January 9th, 2018. So the Money Vibe book will come out. I released it on Kindle about two weeks ago and it went to number one in the new hot releases. So uh, that's the wonderful thing that I just accomplished, but the paperback comes out January 9th. And then um, in April of 2018, I'm leading a, a retreat in um, uh, Vancouver, Canada. Uh, yeah, at, just outside of Vancouver, Canada that I'm really looking forward to. And that will be um, a retreat around Money Vibe and uh, helping people understand about their vibe. Uh, related to time and money and uh, and life, really their their passion vibe, if you will. That's so that's awesome. Me. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And then um, in May of 2018, I'm launching a coach training program for people that want to work and do the work that I do and be trained in my programs. I have a, a coach trainer. Program. Yeah, I'll be training people in my coaching program called Life Design. I have a, a program that I've been teaching for 10 years called Life Design. And last year, I launched my first time coach training program for other people to become certified life design coaches. So I'm doing that again in May of 2018. And then September of 2018, I'm leading a spiritual retreat in Sedona, Arizona called um, Discover Your True Power. And I'm doing that with another author whose name is Howard Falco. He wrote a book called I Am, uh, I Am, The Power of Discovering Who You Really Are. So I have some exciting things. What is that book? Yeah, oh, it's a great, he's, it's a great book. He's a great friend of mine and, and someone I really admire. So, um, oh, I'm, I'm keynoting um, a conference for the National Association of Social Workers in Massachusetts. So there'll be about 800 of my closest friends and colleagues from the social work community listening to me talk about Calming the Chaos, one of my books. And um, yeah, so it's, you know, it's already. Look at, look at your face, your face comes alive and glows because you're doing what you're meant to do. And looking forward to all of that. That's amazing. Yeah. Tell me one thing, what do you do for fun? This. <laughs> you mean what else do I do for fun? Yeah, like fun that's really just plain old fun. Yeah, well, I do have a, a getaway weekend planned with my spouse in February that I'm really looking forward to. I am an avid racquetball and basketball player. Uh, mm -hmm. So those are two of my loves. I play racquetball probably three or four times a week and play basketball as often as I can. I, I play on uh, leagues and teams, you know, women's leagues and teams. So I enjoy that tremendously. And um, 
tonight I'm, I'm going to go uh, go out and see a movie with my family. So yeah, I really do have a beautifully balanced life of, you know, physical working out time. I just hired a new physical trainer because I'm not 20 anymore and <laughs> I need to keep this body of mine in shape. So I'm looking forward to working with a trainer and playing racquetball and getaway weekends with my spouse. And always every year, my summer is spent at our beautiful summer home in the Thousand Islands of upstate New York. So I always look forward to that. My, my precious three months uh, in the Thousand Islands region of upstate New York. So I've got to ask you, do you water ski? <laughs> Let's just say you have, to, list. Yeah. Um, you have to come and teach me how to do that, barefoot or not. I have a boat. I can tow you for sure. Let's do it. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Mm -hmm. So what's the best way for people to get a hold of you if they want to get some coaching or hire you as a speaker? Yeah, I would love that. So there's a, a few places that people can find me. So um, my email address is just simple. My website is uh, JackieWoodside.com and uh, Jackie at JackieWoodside.com goes right to me, right to my phone anytime. Easy to find me that way. But also people can hook up with me on Facebook, Jackie Woodside Speaker or the Vibe Tribe with Jackie Woodside on Facebook also. I'm also on LinkedIn or Twitter at Jackie Woodside. I really encourage people to join the Bad Tribe. It's a oh, wonderful so group there. I guess I'm getting to know some people there. I really encourage people to do that. Yeah. So Jackie, let's wrap up with one thing. Is there a special quote that you live by or something yeah, that actually, you do? Wonderful question. There's a quote by George Bernard Shaw uh, that I love. And it says, this is the true joy in life, being used by a purpose recognized by yourself as a mighty one. The being a force of nature instead of a feverish clod of ailments and grievances, complaining that the world is not devoting itself to making you happy. I'm of the opinion that my life belongs to the whole community, and for as long as I live, it's my privilege to do for whatever I can. Life is no brief candle to me, it's sort of a splendid torch that I've got hold of, and I want to make it burn as brightly as I can before passing it on to future generations. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. That's one I had. Yeah. yeah. That was a life changing quote for me. I use that a lot in my talks. I, I use that quote a lot in my talks. So people who've heard me speak probably recognize it. It's awesome. Thank okay. you. Well, thank you for joining me, Jackie. Thank you for having me. That was, was fun. It was.